And long may that be the case. Esenati Loli Taylor. Well, may I say Happy New Year to everyone in this house tonight? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, as we all know, housing plays a vital role in a healthy and happy life. A healthy and happy life. New Zealand First believes that every New Zealander deserves a decent place to live. Now, we have a strong democratic tradition infused with our egalitarian ethos and desire to own our place to call home. It is a sad and grim reality that under this current government, that dream, that dream is becoming increasingly unobtainable for young Kiwi families. New Zealand First holds grave concerns about the housing situation that face a generation of New Zealanders. The government's approach to the housing crisis can be summed up in one word. Do you want to hear that one word? It's called dere deregulation. That's the word. Ours is not a party. Who wants to hear it? Who wants to hear it? Don't you know how to spell the word deregulation? Go back to school. You shouldn't be in here. Ours is not a party that wants to constrict businesses and developers with unnecessary obstacles and red tape. Nor do we want these costs burdening young families and first home buyers. However, however, we have seen firsthand what a casual, ill-considered housing deregulation has done to hard-working New Zealanders up and down the country. Careless deregulations of the housing market in the early 1990s led to the emergence of leaky building syndrome. Unsuspecting hard that's right. Unsuspecting hard-working Kiwis bought up homes eager to step up onto the property ladder. Many invested their life savings to get their own house. What happened? They were failed by the system. That's what happened. Leaky building syndrome has cost and continues to cost the government, local councils and affected property owners millions upon millions of dollars. So while we support sensible, carefully considered measures to lower housing costs, we do not support a bonfire of regulations. Because in a few years down the track, when it all starts to, I mean, to, when it all starts turning to custard, rest assured that National Party will be keen to shift the blame. Throughout the years, we have been calling for consecutive governments to take up our policies, which would have alleviated the housing crisis that we currently face. The truth is that there is no one silver bullet to solve the housing crisis. Rather, a number of forward-thinking changes need to be made. And as, yeah, Mr. Spray and walk away, that's true. As for foreign investment, we need to get the best result out of our current housing supply as opposed to having foreign nationals who do not take up residency in New Zealand buying up houses at the expense of our own young Kiwi families. The second aspect is ensuring that foreign investment is doing what we want it to do, that is helping to solve the housing crisis. Other countries woke up to this reality years ago. They have. They knew they needed to use foreign investment in a way that bettered their own people and country. In Australia, for example, they stopped foreign nationals buying up housing, housing stock, that is, for investment purposes. They knew that there was no gain for them in having foreigners just buy up houses because it did not help the economy, did not create any jobs for, for Australians and made it harder for Australian battlers to get onto the property ladder. Instead, they permitted foreign nationals to buy a property under strict conditions. Now, why are we not doing something similar here? Why? 
We have a prime minister who has a background in investment and international markets. Surely he should know a thing or two about getting foreign investments to bring about desirable outcomes. We do not have the luxury of allowing unrestricted buying of our limited housing stock by foreigners. Many countries like Singapore, Hong Kong and Australia impose strict rules on foreign buyers. That's right. And what of regional development? Jobs and housing are in intrinsically tied together. Is there any wonder that the housing crisis is concentrated in Auckland? Or why there are so few young people from the provinces stay in their hometown? People from provincial, provi provincial New Zealand are flocking to Auckland in search for work. That's right. They know that there is there where, I mean, in Auckland, there are these main places, the main employers are there. That's where the money is, that's where the jobs are. So yes, the Prime Minister might be correct when he talks about affordable housing in Lumsden, in the far south. The truth is, the jobs are simply not there. This government has a number of members from provincial New Zealand, yet what incentives are they creating to keep jobs in the provinces? Undeniably, the most understated factor contributing to the housing crisis is regional development. And what of immigration? There seems to be a taboo about mentioning immigration in the context of housing. At the risk of stating the obvious, all migrants require housing. New Zealand is adding around 40,000 citizens a year, a figure which exceeds the rate of natural population increase. It's time the number of migrants was adjusted to help the housing situation, particularly as the majority of migrants choose to live in Auckland. Solving the housing crisis is not simply a case of throwing around figures about how many homes built are different how many homes different parties claim they can build. It is about ensuring long-term solutions are found through sensible policies. For many young families, the aim of home ownership is no longer obtainable. Our proud tradition and culture of being property-owning democracy is now under threat. Is this truly the path we want for our future young families? The answer is surely no. New Zealand First believes every New Zealander is entitled to decent housing and we must make that a reality. And last but not least, I would like, on a brighter side that is, let me congratulate the Prime Minister for recognising New Zealand First short sharp sentencing amendment bill that has been plundered by his government in its move to make prisoners work while behind bars. The initiative was clearly taken from New Zealand First Member's Bill that I referred to in my maiden speech last year and was submitted into the ballot last year. I believe the government would be wise to implement the whole bill in order to improve the prison work scheme. It is pleasing, Mr Speaker, to see our policies being picked up by the government, but they should come clean and give credit to where it's due. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.